Please join in singing our opening hymn, O Come, All Ye Faithful. spirit. Dear friends in Christ, thank you for tuning into this Mass today at the Cathedral of St. Peter and Chains in Peterborough. Uh, you are joining us via YouTube and we are gathering in the joy of the Christmas season and we celebrate this day the Feast of the Holy Family, praying that the family life of Jesus, Mary and Joseph might be a model for us in our own family lives. To prepare our hearts to celebrate worthily the sacred mysteries of our faith, let us acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Word made flesh. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you were born of the Virgin Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you grew in wisdom, age, and grace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, people of good will. Glory, glory to God, glory to God in the highest. Glory, glory to God, and on earth peace to people, people. Adore you, we glorify. 
glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, glory, glory to God, glory to God in the of the world have mercy on us you take away the sins of the world receive our prayer you are seated at the right hand of the father have mercy on us with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the shining example of the Holy Family, graciously grant that we may imitate them in practicing the virtues of family life and in the bonds of charity, and so in the joy of your house, delight one day in eternal rewards. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliza of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, this man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. The Lord brought him outside and said, look towards heaven and count the stars if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, so shall your descendants be and he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the father of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham. 
for I have made you the father of a multitude of nations. God said to Abram, Abraham, as for Sarah, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she will give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore him, and Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. The word of the Lord. Our psalm, the Lord remembers his covenant forever. among the peoples. Oh, sing to him, sing his praise, tell all his wonderful works. The Lord remembers his God. the hearts that seek the Lord rejoice. Consider the Lord and his strength. Constantly seek his face. The Lord remembers his God. he has done, his miracles, the judgments he spoke. Oh, children of Abraham, his servant. Oh, children of Jacob, he chose. The Lord remembers his God. his covenant forever, his promise for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath he swore to Isaac. The Lord remembers his God.
A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, Sarah herself, though barren, received power to conceive, even when she was too old, because she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born. As many as the stars of heaven and as, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. By faith, Abraham, when, he put, to the, when put to the test, offered up Isaac, he who had received the promises, was ready to offer up his only begotten son, of whom he had been told. It is through Isaac that descendants shall be named for you. Abraham considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. The word of the Lord. your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph brought the child Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, this child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment, she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. 
When Mary and Joseph had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. The Feast of the Holy Family falls on the Sunday after Christmas, which always seems fitting. Having just celebrated the birth of our Lord, it seems natural to reflect on what his family life with Mary and Joseph must have been like. And that offers a segue, a natural segue, into our own family lives. And during this COVID Christmas of 2020, when families couldn't get together in quite the way they were used to doing, it impressed upon all of us the importance of family. Because when you miss something, you're not as likely to take it for granted. I mean, family life means a lot of different things to us because families are places of love and support, places of learning and socialization, places where we work and share responsibilities, and yes, where we sometimes struggle but where we also feel safe. But let's reflect for a bit today on the family as a place of of faith, a place where the faith is first learned and shared, a place where it's nurtured with the hopes that the gift of faith might be passed on to future generations. A study done in the US last year asked people what influenced them to be persons of faith and 60% credited the influence of a a family member. And of those respondents, 68% pointed to the faith of their mother, about half to the faith of their father, and 37% to the influence of a grandparent. I've read other studies that indicate that a, a father's religious practice is the best predictor of an individual's uh, religious commitment when they become an adult. Studies abound, I guess, but however you parse the numbers, it's clear that family is a major influence in a person's belief system and in the practice of their faith. And that should be no surprise because it's from our families that we receive our most important, our most cherished values. The readings today present as families who lived and prevailed by the virtue of faith. It took faith for Abraham and Sarah to believe that God could really give them a son at their advanced age. And the letter to the Hebrews said it so well. By faith, Sarah conceived. By faith, Abraham believed. They could not possibly have known what lay in store for them as new parents at an old age, but they trusted in God. And we see the great faithfulness of the Holy Family in today's gospel because In devotion to God, they brought their son, Jesus, to the temple for his presentation to do what was customary and expected under the law. And they must have listened in fear and wonder as as Simeon prophesied about the boy. They must have been startled by his words to Mary. But they remained faithful. They were true to their vocation as parents, and their son grew and was filled with wisdom. It's significant, I think, that we see the Holy Family in the temple. See, Joseph and Mary were observant to the traditions of the Jewish faith. They instilled that in their son. Twelve or so years after this, we know that Jesus would be found in the temple again, arguing with the doctors of the law. See, he grew up in a family of devout faith, and guided in his humanity, guided by Mary and Joseph seeing their commitment to God. Of course, we know very well the the disappointment of people who have lived faithful lives only to see their children perhaps distance themselves from the faith, or at least practice of the faith. There's no automatic formula for success, especially in a secular age that seems to work so much against faith. But this feast today calls, calls us to keep the faith, to remain steadfast so that God's grace may in some way touch the hearts of those around us, including our families. 
Uh, earlier this month, Pope Francis declared a year of St. Joseph to run from December 8th of this year to December 8th of next year, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. And in his letter on St. Joseph, uh, Pope Francis reflects on how much good is done in the world by ordinary people who go mostly unnoticed. And he says that that has been especially true in this pandemic as fathers, mothers, grandparents, and teachers are helping young people to deal with this crisis by adjusting their daily lives, by looking ahead, and by practicing prayer. He says this, each of us could discover in Joseph, the man who goes unnoticed, an intercessor, support, and guide in times of trouble. And he says, he goes on to say that St. Joseph reminds us of those who appear hidden or maybe seem to live in the shadows, that they can play an incomparable role in the history of salvation. So let's reflect upon that this Christmas season, the quiet but powerful ways that we could witness to God's love and goodness within our families and thereby make a difference in the world. And let fathers especially take note and resist that temptation to offload their religious duties and their witness of faith to others because their witness is absolutely crucial and it can't be easily replaced. And finally, let's reflect on the role of the elderly within our families and the witness of faith and endurance that they bring. Uh, that seems appropriate there for this set of readings today where the elderly are really the stars. Abraham and Sarah, too old to conceive, who trusted that God would be true to his word. Simeon and Anna, serving in the temple for many years, longing for the Messiah to come, who had the wisdom to recognize him when Mary and Joseph brought him through the doors. It seems especially important to recapture a sense of the gift that the elderly bring to our communities and to our church, especially as this, this pandemic has confronted us with the sad fact that our, our seniors have too often been cared for in ways that don't align with their dignity. We must learn to tear, cherish them and to do better. Well, I find it notable that more than a third of the people in that U.S. study pointed to the faith of a grandparent as something that was crucial to them in their embracing of the faith. And this is a theme that Pope Francis, again, has often reflected on. He once remarked, just as a fine wine grows stronger with age, grandparents and other elderly Catholics have the strength to leave us a noble inheritance. They are the ones who transmit history to us, who transmit doctrine, who transmit the faith and give it to us as an inheritance. Well, I'm very aware that the congregation, the audience for this YouTube Mass, probably skews to the elderly, uh, to a crowd that's a little bit older. And you faithful people have today made the effort to tune into this Mass two days after Christmas. So, friends, on this Feast of the Holy Family, I thank you for your faith, for your wisdom, for your witness, and pray that it may continue richly to bless the Church and, of course, to bless your own beloved families. With the Apostles' Creed, together we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen.
Together, let us offer our petitions to the Father, knowing that he loves us and is always there to guide us. For the Church, may God's guidance be upon every member in living out the Gospel message. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the salvation of the world and for the conversion away from sin and towards the Gospel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those undergoing trials, may the Lord bless them with strength and courage. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may the Holy Spirit help us grow in faith and hope and love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, may they be welcomed into the heavenly community and rest in eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear our prayers and grant us every good thing according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. We offer you Lord the sacrifice of conciliation humbly asking that through the intercession of the Virgin Mother of God and Saint Joseph you may establish our families firmly in your grace and your peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We have lifted them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Peter, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At 
the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who call to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, worthy that you should enter, enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, united as a family of faith, let us join together now in praying the prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Bring those you refresh with this heavenly sacrament, most merciful Father, to imitate constantly the example of the Holy Family, so that after the trials of this world, we may share their company forever through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, thank you so much for joining in and participating in this celebration of uh, the Mass on the Feast of the Holy Family. Uh, you should know that one of your bishop's pet peeves is this, that Christmas does not end at midnight on December the 26th, but that the season extends until the Feast of the Baptism of the Lord, well into January. And so let's try to hold some of that joy of Christ's birth in our hearts, and I pray that the graces of this season may be with you and your families. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. So 
Lord.